I think that'd be quite cool. Depends who else is there, really. I wouldn't want to be there on my own. I'd love it. No. <laughs> I'd do it. Um, I don't think it would be a planet that I would like to visit. I think, I think I'd get homesick. I would like to live in another solar system, but, like, yeah. I would like to go to the moon. So, uh, no, I don't know about living the rest of my life in Mars. That'd be a bit much. But, uh, yeah, visiting I probably would. So, yeah. Mars One will establish human settlement on Mars in 2023. In that year, the first group of four humans will land on Mars. Every two years after that, another group will join the settlement. 1972 was the last time that humans walked on the moon. No human has ever gone as far as Mars. Mars One has designed a mission that is much simpler than previous designs for Mars missions. The most significant simplification is that the crew is actually going to stay and live on Mars with the intention to remain there for the rest of their lives. I'm 27 years old and I walk down the street at night and I look up and I see the moon and I think, but we've put man on moon. And that, that realisation every time, happens half a dozen times a week, still inspires me and impresses me, the fact that we've put man up there. So I don't think it's ever going to become mundane to think I'm on a different planet. So I like to think that that will continue even when I'm on Mars. The reason I applied for Mars, Mars One was to, more to inspire people. It was, it, it, space exploration is the best way of, of, of inspiring young people to take up science, and not just young people, but everyone as well. It's exciting, it's, it's cool, it's, oh, it's, it's so hard to describe, really. It's just, it's the chance to do something that no one in history has ever done before. And you're effectively immortalising yourself, really. Um, I, I want to be remembered, really. I, I want to be remembered as someone, one of those people that people kind of get taught by in school, oh, this person never gave up. I want to inspire people. That, that's really what I want to do, and th this seems the best way for me to re really make a mark and uh, for the better. I had to find something to go down in history. Like I said, I didn't know what it was. I knew I wanted to go down in history. I had to find something. We've gone along the path now, and let's hope this is what I found. At, at the beginning, um, we had to submit a very extensive application form, uh, which effectively was to psychologically profile us to make sure that we were really serious about the mission. The selection is going to be very difficult. I mean, I, I can imagine setting out a criteria, but I can also imagine not being able to find really individuals that kind of meet that criteria very easily. And in some ways, you probably can't do it that way around. You, I think you're probably going to have to work on the basis of people who could take part in the team already. Running for a total of 520 days, the Mars 500 study is the first ever full duration simulation of a mission to Mars. That was a quite, quite an exciting experience to be there with your two buddies in the spacesuits, uh, alone, isolated from everyone, and working, uh, all depending on each other uh, to to survive, to work. Uh, happily, we didn't have any conflict uh, coming out of any of our initial disagreements, and um, it's good to know we are still one team even one year after the start of this isolation study. The findings of things like Mars 500 
won't necessarily generalize to other pro projects, similar projects. It's not easy to do that. If you, if you know you're in the middle, of the middle of the desert and all you're doing is trying to survive, it, you go loopy. But if you know that if you do lose control of yourself or do start drifting off into, into strange places, that you're going to die. It focuses to a certain degree. But the major issue in terms of psychological, I think, is the loneliness. So the expedition to the Mars Desert Research Station, the, the overall aim is really to simulate what a colony on Mars would be like. So you live in the conditions as astronauts on Mars, disconnected from Earth. So whenever you exit the station, you have to wear a spacesuit. You pretend that the outside air is not breathable. It is a very intense experience, honestly, because so the, the habitat module, so you can imagine it's, it's a cylinder shape, has two floors, and it's only eight meters in diameter. If there's a conflict, you can't escape. Because you know in the back of your mind that if you don't get along with someone, you probably will end up dying because the mission will fail. It is a motivator that makes you resolve conflict or be more easygoing. There is a huge risk of, out of three other people in the entire world, you will get someone who you won't get on with very well. If otherwise, if you're gonna have people together a lot of the time, how do you get on? Well, you have to accept that people don't get on all the time. Just the social aspects and the claustrophobic and that kind of thing doesn't bother me so much. It's, it's more of the science that bothers me. This is a special report from Channel 4 News. Good morning, I'm Kent Shocknick in Space Shuttle Challenger. It's just a few seconds away from blasting off from the Kennedy Space Center near Cape Canaveral, Florida. Six, we have main engine start. Four, three, two, one, and liftoff. Liftoff off the 25th Space Shuttle mission and it has cleared the tower. It's always amazing to hear how quickly the shuttle moves. It's already more than four miles downwind as we just heard. Engine throttling up, three engines now at 104%. The shuttle mission will launch, my God. One minute 15. There's seconds. been an explosion. Velocity 2,900 feet per second, altitude nine nautical miles, downrange distance seven nautical miles. This is not standard. This is not something that is planned, of course. I can see a solid rocket booster has broken away from Shuttle Challenger. That's what you're looking at in the middle of your screen. You're looking very carefully at the situation. Obviously a major malfunction. Today is a day for mourning and remembering. I know it's hard to understand, but sometimes painful things like this happen. It's all part of the process of exploration and discovery. It's all part of taking a chance and expanding man's horizons. The future doesn't belong to the faint-hearted. It belongs to the brave. I have no fear. I don't know if that's a dangerous thing or a good thing. You know, it can be looked on in two different ways. Um, to have no fear can be dangerous, but it's like, no, nothing scares me. There's a story from back with the Apollo missions that the Apollo astronauts would see flashes in their eyeballs as they, um, as they went around the moon. And the reason was because as, as you exit the, the magnetic field of the Earth, or at least further out so you're no longer protected by it, cosmic rays react with the fluid in your eyes, causing a flash of light. Uh, it's called Cherenkov radiation. It causes a little flash of light, and they can see that in their eyes, which concerns me quite a lot. Because obviously it means it's, your cosmic rays are reacting with your body as they come through, and they can do a lot of damage because they're very powerful. So that's the major thing for me, I think, is whether or not we'll make it there alive, or at least alive in a in a useful sense. Some of the doctors were concerned, for instance, that when you're in zero G for a while, for several hours, you're afraid your eyes might change shape. Roger, zero G, and I feel fine. Capsule is turning around. Oh, that view is tremendous. What bothers me most about that is the science of it. It's the, the fact that we'll no longer be protected by the Earth's magnetic field, so there'll be cosmic rays attacking us. There'll be solar rays attacking as well, so if we get a particularly big solar eruption or whatever else and it hits us and cause serious damage to us and the spacecraft itself, that's the major thing. It's, that's, we're actually, in a, in a way, we're actually, in a sense, we're, we're safer on Mars because Mars has at least some of an atmosphere that can protect us, but uh, the spacecraft doesn't so much. 
At 9 o'clock this morning, Mission Control in Houston lost contact with our Space Shuttle Columbia. It is easy to overlook the dangers of travel by rocket and the difficulties of navigating the fierce outer atmosphere of the Earth. These astronauts knew the dangers and they faced them willingly, knowing they had a high and noble purpose in life. Our journey into space will go on. Mankind is led into the darkness beyond our world by the inspiration of discovery and the longing to understand. I suppose that's my only fear, is death when it comes. But I think everybody fears death, don't they? It doesn't matter who you are. You do fear it, but it's inevitable and it's going to come to everybody and whatever way it is. People, when they die, they're just gone. It just, it often comes suddenly and we have no preparation for this. Because we have 10 years of advance notice, I'll be able to put my affairs in order. I'll be able to say goodbye to my, I'll be able to do things right. Um, and once then, once my life is sorted and I know that I'm ready, then I'll be fully prepared to do this, ready for the great adventure that's coming up. That's quite exciting, isn't it? It's, it's no one has ever walked out on the surface. No one's ever picked up a, a Martian rock and no one's ever dug a bit under the surface and things. The impossible become impossible. I want to prove that there's life on Mars. Playing around in low gravity will be, will be amazing, I think. Going there and living there just seems to be something even more wonderful than going there. Like, so if you're just going there like a camping trip, staying in there and then you come back, it's almost like you always know at the back of your mind that the adventure is going to end. Um, but going there and living there, you can really achieve that much more. I'll never miss people fighting over lines on maps and names of countries and flag colours and all that kind of stuff. I'll never, I'll never miss that. I think I'd miss family and friends that I had here, but, I, but a lot of it I won't really be too bothered about. I think it's just the relationships I'll miss more than anything else on Earth. If most of us actually sit here and think about it, don't you think life is quite lovely at, at times? Getting married and having a kid like that, that's something that basically almost everyone gets a chance to do. And I don't want to do what everyone gets to do, I want to do what no one has ever got the chance to do. Any dream, any goal can be achieved. Any. All it takes is an answer, the drive, the will to do it.